Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India discussion um, of uh, trying to construct the universal covering for a topological space. Uh, at least uh, uh, what we are interested in are universal, universal covers for Riemann surfaces, okay. But then this is completely of a topological nature. So uh, it applies to any topological space. And of course uh, uh, I must again remind you that by any topological space we are of course going to confine ourselves to topological spaces which are housed off arcoids connected, locally arcoids connected and locally simply connected, okay. So uh, let me recall quickly uh, what I did it, uh, in the previous lecture. So what had happened was, um, uh, so given uh, given a topological space X and a point of X and uh, what we wanted, uh, uh, we wanted to construct, to construct the universal covering space for X and uh, uh, so you know uh, we all we have already seen that uh, I, uh, in the case of the universal covering uh, the picture looks like this. So if P is the covering map from the universal covering space to X um, then over each point uh, small x in capital X what you get the fiber P inverse of X is just the fundamental group uh, first fundamental group of capital X based at small x okay and, thi and this happens for every point. So if X prime is another point then what you get uh, above is uh, the f a copy of the fundamental group at, at that point X prime and in this way. Uh, the universal covering. Um, so when I say equal to, I mean bijective as sets. Okay. So there is a natural identification of P in was X, uh, the fiber over the point X with the fundamental group based at X. Okay. And uh, so you get this picture of the universal covering being, uh, uh, at least as a set, just uh, gotten by putting over each point X uh, a copy of the fundamental group based at X. Okay. So this was our starting point. To uh, to construct this this space X sub unif. So uh, um, if you recall, uh, what we did was uh, this is what we did. Uh, so how did we define uh, X sub unif? At least to begin with as a set. So what we did was well, uh, we know what to put over X. Over X, you'll have to put in. Uh, you have to put pi inverse. Uh, I mean, you have to put the first fundamental group based at X. Okay. And what do you put uh, uh, at a at a different point x prime? Okay, above x prime, what we are going to put is homotopy equivalence classes of paths alpha, which start from x and end at x prime. And this, uh, so these are all paths, and the homotopy, uh, the equivalence is with respect to fixed endpoint homotopy. Okay, and uh, so. Uh, in particular, uh, if the point x prime were x, what we would put, we would put above would be homotopy equivalence, fixed endpoint homotopy equivalence of paths starting at x and ending at x, which is precisely the fundamental group at x. Okay, so when x prime is equal to x, what you put above is exactly the fundamental group based at x. Okay, and then I uh, so um, so this was uh, this was how x sub uni was defined was defined to be uh, paths on capital X starting at small x modulo fixed endpoint homotopy okay. So 
uh, when I say modulo fixed endpoint homotopy, I mean take equivalence classes. So this is a set of equivalence classes uh, under fixed endpoint homotopy. And what was the map from uh, 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 the from this set to X? This was a very natural map, which would send a path alpha to uh, the uh, uh, it would send a point which is equivalence class alpha to the endpoint. Okay, so uh, so in this case, if alpha was a path uh, ending at X prime, uh, then this would go to X prime, which is alpha of one. Okay, so this was the uh, this was the map from uh, this set to X. Okay, and since X is uh, so, you can see immediately that uh, uh, X arc wise connected connected uh, would imply that this P is surjective. And we also saw last time uh, how to convert this uh, set into a topological space. Okay, so uh, what we did was. Uh, um, maybe I need. <laughs> so I just rub this and write it properly. FAP homotopy. So, uh, top topology on uh, this set. So the topology on this set was also based on a very intuitive diagram. So you see you have this set above which is uh, X sub U and U nib and of course there is this map P and what you have below is your uh, space X and well uh, give me a point above which is a which is a homotopy equivalence class alpha where alpha is therefore going to be a path from X and it is going to end at uh, uh, alpha of 1. Okay, now what do you what would you expect to have as an open neighborhood of alpha? Okay, uh, you know P. Finally, we have to show that P is a covering map. Okay, in particular, it's a local homeomorphism, and you know it's an open map. And therefore, you know if this if you if you're going to prescribe an open set above, its image has to be an open set below, and therefore it has to look like this. Okay, and th therefore what you do is you start with an open set U which is an open neighborhood of alpha of 1 and then what you do is you define uh, a base for the topology uh, with basic open sets with basic open sets of the form uh, we call it uh, the notation was U comma alpha. So this is this U comma alpha. This u comma alpha actually is the set of all alpha beta, where you know beta is a path in u starting at alpha of one, and of course u an uh, open set containing alpha of one. Okay, so what are you going to? What are what are the points in this neighborhood? Well, uh, I so this is alpha one, alpha of one. This is the end point of alpha. I have this open set U, and then now I take another point. I I, I connect. I, I take another path from alpha of one, uh, say beta, from alpha of one to another point in U. Okay, then you see alpha followed by beta is certainly uh, a path from X, okay, and that will give me a point here. So that that will be this point, alpha beta. Okay. So uh, uh, nearby points here come from nearby points below. Okay, and <coughs> at least uh, locally, but uh, it's very clear that in this way nearby points go to nearby points, and that's essentially saying that P is continuous. So uh, I verified in the last lecture that uh, sets of this uh, sets of this form form a base for the topology. That means you uh, give the topology on this uh, to be uh, consisting of sets which are gotten by taking finite intersections of sets of this form 
and then taking arbitrary reunions. So, arbitrary reunions are finite intersections of sets of this form, okay. And uh, of course, uh, any open set will then be uh, can be expressed as a union of basic open sets, okay. Any point in an open set uh, can be surrounded by a basic open set, and that is the reason why they are called basic uh, sets of this form, sets of the form uh, alpha, comma u give a base because uh, number one uh, the whole uh, space uh, the whole space x sub unif is actually a set of this form namely I take the constant path at x and then I take x itself okay. So uh, every point uh, uh, every point of this is just a path starting at x which is the end point of c of x mind you c of x is going to lie here okay. So here is x and in the fundamental group there is a unit element that unit element is just cx the constant path at x and uh, where will it go to it will go to the end point of this which is precisely x. So cx is here okay and uh, uh, you take cx it will go uh, you take it ends point its end point which is x and then take the whole space x as as an open set so you get this pair and this will include all points because of x because x is arcwise connected okay um, then uh, or even by definition then the second thing is you take uh, what is the property of uh, basic open sets you take any two basic open sets or, or for that matter any finite intersection of basic open sets if you if given any point in that intersection you should find another basic open set sitting inside that intersection. So we verified this for two in the in the following way uh, if gamma is a point lying in say uh, alpha 1 comma u1 intersection uh, alpha 2 comma u2 then uh, gamma is contained in the uh, the set gamma comma u1 intersection u2 which is contained in this intersection which is further contained in alpha 1 uh, comma u1 intersection alpha 2 comma u2 okay. So given a point uh, in the intersection I am able to find another basic open set uh, which is in the intersection which contains this point okay. So because of this condition uh, you can see that uh, all these open sets are just union are just given by unions of basic open sets. Uh, and given any point in an open set you can always find a basic open set surrounding that point uh, which is contained in your in your given open set. So these uh, these basic open sets are therefore uh, they are building blocks for all open sets okay. So well so uh, this makes uh, this into a topological space and then this map uh, becomes a continuous map okay. Uh, the map the map P uh, becomes continuous. and uh, uh, that is also uh, very easy to see because I will have to just show that the inverse image of open sets are open. So uh, if you take uh, if you take a point alpha in P inverse of u where u uh, is open in x okay then uh, you know this alpha is contained in this basic open set namely alpha comma u which is also in p inverse u okay so what you have what what i have proved is uh, uh, so this is the diagram you suppose i have uh, i have u and i take p inverse u and i take an alpha okay then alpha is certainly contained in this pair and that pair certainly under the map p goes into u that means this pair will be in p inverse u okay uh, this open set defined by this data is going to be in p inverse u. So what I have proved is that every point of p inverse u uh, uh, is uh, surrounded by a basic open neighborhood okay a basic open set which is also contained in p inverse u and therefore p inverse u is open okay. So this implies this implies p inverse u is open. 
So, um, so that tells you that the map P is continuous okay. Then the third thing that I explained was uh, that this topology uh, makes uh, uh, this uh, with this topology the space uh, the topological space that you get uh, is Hausdorff. So that is something that I again explained in the last lecture and you see the uh, uh, in proving that this is Hausdorff we use the fact that uh, capital X is uh, locally simply connected okay. So uh, this uses uses the fact that uh, capital X is locally simply connected. Okay, it uses this fact. Um, now, uh, now we'll have to do several other things. What we need to prove. So, what is left? What is it that is uh, left out to be done? I need to show that. Finally, I need to show that this is the universal covering. Okay, I need to show this is the universal covering. So, first of all, I have to show. Um, I have to prove certain properties of uh, this space, this topological space. Okay, uh, what are those properties? I need to show that uh, this space is. Uh, uh, arcwise wise connected locally arc wise connected uh, locally simply connected and then finally I need to show it is also simply connected because I told you uh, the universal covering space is by definition a covering space for which uh, the space above is simply connected. So I need to prove that this is arc wise connected locally arc wise connected locally simply connected and simply connected I have to prove all that okay. Then I will have to prove uh, that this map is a covering map okay. So if I had to that means what I will have to prove that this is a local homeomorphism okay uh, and in particular uh, uh, that means I will have to it, it would follow that this is also an open map okay. So uh, what I am going to do now is uh, because X already has this local properties the local prop the properties of being locally connected locally simply connected the moment I prove this is a local homeomorphism these properties will also pass on automatically to the universal covering space. To, to this topological space okay. So my aim would be first strategy would be to first somehow show that this is a local homeomorphism okay. Uh, then after showing that this is a local homeomorphism then I will show that it is also a covering map that means there is an for every point below there is an admissible neighbourhood okay such that the inverse image breaks up into a disjoint union of open neighbourhoods each of which is homeomorphically mapped by P onto uh, this neighbourhood in X of that point in X okay. So, uh, so the strategy now is to first show that the map P is an open map. So that is what I am going to do look at uh, so you know I am trying to prove P is a local homeomorphism. So I am going to look at P restricted to uh, this basic open neighbourhood alpha comma u from you know alpha comma u to u I am going to look at this map okay um, of course it is a continuous map it is just restriction of a continuous map to an open set so it is a continuous map alright and uh, now uh, what is uh, uh, what is the image of this map okay what is the image of this map. So you can see the uh, uh, the image of this map of this map map is the set of all uh, x prime in u or let me say x belonging to u such that x can be uh, connected connected to alpha of 1 by a path in u right. So what is in the image of this map the if there is a point so if there is a point uh, uh, if there is a point which is in the image of this map okay then it has to be uhhh uh, so it has to come so if there is a point in the image of this map okay it has to come from from a point like this okay and a point like this uh, by definition involves a path which uh, existence of a path from alpha of 1 to uh, its its end point okay. So here is my x uh, oh okay I think my x is already fixed I should not use this x again uh, fortunately so uh, let me use x prime please change it to x prime okay so x is confusing because x has already been fixed the point x is fixed okay. So uh, the image of this map is all those x prime 
which can be connected to alpha of 1 by a path in u that is my claim all right. So, this is uh, 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 this is quite clear because you see so here is my alpha and uh, this is alpha of 1 and uh, and this is my u okay and suppose uh, there is a point here let me call this point as x prime suppose that this is the point x prime and suppose it is in the image of this map t from uh, a point above the point above the point above has to come from here because i am only looking at the restriction of this map from here and i am looking at its image okay then but what is a point here a point here is of the form alpha followed by beta it is alpha uh, so here alpha followed by a beta all right. So, what it means is there is some alpha followed by beta here that will go that 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 is a point here uh, in uh, in x sub unit in, in fact uh, in in this you know in this in this uh, basic open neighborhood namely alpha comma u and you see that is going to this point here under p okay which by definition means that beta if you look at the definition of uh, uh, this uh, this basic open neighborhood beta should be a path in u starting at alpha of 1 okay and uh, the the projection map takes this alpha beta to the end point of beta okay. So, what is going to happen is that this alpha beta so beta is going to be a path from alpha of 1 to the end point of beta uh, which is x prime okay that means x prime can be connect connected to alpha of 1 by a path in u conversely if x prime is connect can be connected to alpha of 1 by a path beta in u then x prime is exactly the image of alpha beta. So, the image of this map is this which is a subset of u this is a subset of u okay. Now, the beautiful thing is that this subset of u turns out to be an open set because x is locally r is connected this set uh, so you know uh, I will give it a name I will just I will just call it uh, u sub x uh, u sub alpha 1 and I will put a r c. So, uh, this notation means uh, look at all those points in u which can be connected by an arc inside u to alpha of 1 which is a point of u okay. So, uh, this is of course a subset of u now what is my claim the claim is uh, if uh, so since x is locally arcwise connected okay uh, u th this set uh, u arc sub alpha 1 is an open subset it is an open subset okay. So, here here again you see where uh, the, this local arcwise connectedness of x is being used okay and uh, why is this true um, so uh, it is it is quite obvious but let me write it down. Um, so, you see I will have to tell you so here is my situation uh, so I am on uh, so I am on x I am on x. Uh, well here is my uh, uh, here is my small x which is fixed and then there is some alpha uh, this is alpha of 1 and then I have this so this is my u okay and uh, I have taken a point of u of this subset of u. So, this is a point uh, let me call it as x prime um, so I let me have some more space let me write it here x prime and x prime uh, is a point in uh, u which can be correct uh, which can which can be connected to a alpha of 1 by an arc okay. Uh, now, what is the condition that x is locally arcwise connected the condition is given any point and given any open sets uh, contain, uh, containing that point you can find a smaller if you can find a smaller open set if not that open set itself a smaller open set which is arcwise connected okay. Now, therefore, uh, here is my point I apply that condition to this point. So, here is my point x prime the, and there is this open set u 
So there is going to be a smaller open set okay uh, which contains x prime okay and uh, which is uh, arc wise connected. So what I will get is I will get I will get a I will get a V okay there exists an open set an arc wise connected open set V containing x prime such that uh, V is also V is inside you okay this is locally arc wise connected how you give me a point and give me a neighborhood no matter how small I can find a smaller neighborhood surrounding that point in your given neighborhood which is arc wise connected okay therefore now you see uh, this V is arc wise connected so every point in V can be connected to x prime but x prime is in this so x and, and x prime can be connected uh, by an arc to alpha of 1 therefore every point in V can also be connected by an arc in alpha uh, uh, to alpha of 1 by an arc in U okay so what this means is it is obvious that V is contained in uh, this this subset okay so what we have proved you take any point of that set I can find an open set uh, I can find an, uh, an open set okay which contains that point and which lies inside this set so that means the set itself is an open set so this implies that uh, uh, this this set is open. So what so the upshot of this is that P restricted to this uh, uh, takes this basic open set to uh, uh, this subset okay and that subset is an open set so so it is very clear that uh, um, uh, P P maps this basic open set uh, every every basic open set to an open set so P is an open map okay so this implies P is an open map this implies P is an open map okay um, and you know um, and it also implies one more thing it tells you that if my u to begin with was already suppose this u was already an arc wise connected subset okay then p restricted to this will be surjective okay if if u is an arc wise connected connected open set containing uh, um, alpha of 1 then p restricted to uh, uh, this basic open set alpha comma u is surjective because because uh, since in this case uh, u will be the same as the set of points in u which can be connected by an arc uh, or a path from alpha of 1 okay. So uh, you know these are all the steps in trying to sh get hold of a uh, uh, neighborhood of alpha which is homeomorphic to a neighborhood below. So the first thing that I get is you take any basic open set the image is open okay and the second thing is uh, uh, if in particular uh, my basic open set the second member was arc wise connected then this is surjective okay so if u is arc you, you can see that if u is arc wise connected then these two are the same okay every uh, every point in u can be connected by an arc to alpha of 1 right so uh, you get surjectivity all right now uh, we will have to go on to injectivity okay so you know I have I have this map so uh, I have this map is already uh, continuous it is open uh, if I choose u to be arc wise connected it is already surjective okay if I just prove it is injective it will become a local homeomorphism because it is an open map the inverse map the moment I prove it is injective I have a set theoretic inverse and because it is open the set theoretic inverse will become continuous so uh, I have to only put more conditions on you to make it injective okay and then I will get a local homeomorphism 
and what what is that condition on u the condition on u is you choose it further to be simply connected okay so let me write that down uh so let me write this so what we do is uh, 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 if u were both simply connected connected uh, and arc wise connected okay then p restricted to this alpha comma u is injected okay so let us prove this okay. So uh, so the situation is as follows uh, so here let me draw another diagram so this is my x and uh, uh, so here is my small x so here is alpha is is the path here and uh, the end point is uh, uh, alpha of 1 and uh, and then, then then i have a uh, neighborhood u of alpha of 1 which is uh, uh, both simply connected and arcwise connected okay i can get such a neighborhood that's because capital x is locally arcwise connected and locally simply connected because capital x is uh, locally arc wise connected and locally simply connected I can get a neighborhood of any point of x which is both arc wise connected and simply connected okay uh, and um, the claim is for such a neighborhood u uh, for such an open set u this pair uh, will be homeomorphic to u under the uh, map p okay and uh, why is that true see suppose you take two points uh, uh, gamma 1 and gamma 2 okay suppose there are two points and uh, these are both in uh, 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 they are both in uh, so you take gamma 1 comma gamma 2 in this neighborhood above basic open set above with uh, both of them going to the same point below okay so with uh, p of gamma 1 is equal to p of gamma 2 okay then what does it mean it means that both of these points will go to this point and what is this point this point will be just the end points of gamma 1 it will also be the end point of gamma 2 okay that is what this condition means okay. Now what is the meaning of saying that gamma 1 gamma 2 are in this see the me it means by this definition it means that gamma 1 is actually alpha followed by a certain beta 1 and gamma 2 is again on this alpha followed by certain beta 2 where beta 1 and beta 2 are paths from alpha of 1 to this common end point okay. So, it will look like this so here is beta 1 and here is beta 2 okay so alpha followed by beta 1 is the path whose uh, homotopy class is gamma 1 okay uh, so and alpha followed by beta 2 is your gamma 2 okay and uh, you see the point is u is simply connected therefore any closed loop in u can be shrunk to a point so this beta 1 followed by beta 2 inverse it is a closed loop in u and it is ending at alpha of 1 so I can shrink it to a point so it is homotopic to the constant path at alpha 1 okay so uh, u simply connected implies that beta 1 followed by beta 2 inverse is homotopic uh, fixed end point homotopic to the constant path at alpha 1 
okay. And uh, of course, you know this is the uh, th this is the same as saying that uh, beta one is fixed end point homotopic to beta two because I'll have to uh, concatenate it both sides with beta two, okay, and I'll get this. So I hope this is clear. Or if not, I'll write one more step. So it, it this means that beta one, beta two inverse beta two is homotopic to C alpha one beta two okay and beta 2 inverse beta 2 inverse followed by beta 2 is a constant path at this point okay. So this will be beta 1 uh, followed by the constant path at uh, beta uh, beta 2 of 1 which is also the same as beta 1 of 1 uh, that will be homotopic to uh, the constant path at alpha 1 followed by beta uh, followed by beta 2 is just homotopic to beta 2 okay. So uh, and beta 1 followed by this constant path will be just homotopic to beta 1 so essentially what I will get is beta 1 is homotopic to beta 2 okay and uh, if beta 1 is homotopic to beta 2 then alpha beta 1 is also homotopic to alpha beta 2 so what it will tell you is therefore that uh, alpha beta 1 is homotopic to alpha beta 2 which means that these two uh, homotopy classes are the same so these two points have to be the same and that will give you injectivity okay. So let me write that down uh, so this implies that alpha beta 1 is homotopic to alpha beta 2 okay and uh, and then that tells you that uh, uh, comma 1 this these two are the same point above and so we have got injectivity. So what has happened is that if you were uh, both a simply connected and arcwise connected neighbourhood of this point alpha of 1 then this map is bijective continuous and open so it is a homeomorphism okay. So uh, so this implies that P restricted to alpha comma u is a homeomorphism okay. So what this now tells you is that it tells you that P is a local homeomorphism okay from this uh, from this you can immediately deduce that the topological space X U and IV uh, has uh, the uh, properties of being uh, locally arcwise connected and locally simply connected okay that you will get immediately all right. So what would be left out is to show that it is arcwise connected okay uh, and then I will have to show that uh, P is a covering map okay I will have to show it is a covering map I, I so far we know that P is only a surjective local homeomorphism okay I told you the difference between this and a covering map is that it should have the unique path lifting property okay but uh, um, we can directly see that P is uh, uh, covering map okay. So uh, we, we can see we can see that next P is a covering map so how does one prove that um, uh, uh, given um, alpha in this. Uh, in X sub unif uh, take uh, u to be a um, uh, an arcwise connected connected arcwise connected and simply connected neighborhood. That is open set uh, uh, containing uh, alpha of one. Okay, so we take the same kind of neighborhood that we wanted uh, to give. Uh, uh, we wanted us to give a uh, set above, which is 
homeomorphic to it okay. So, you take that uh, uh, kind of neighborhood okay. The claim is you take uh, just inverse image of that neighborhood then uh, the inverse image is going down going to break down into pieces disjoint union of pieces each of which is homeomorphically mapped by p onto this neighborhood therefore the uh, alpha of 1 you see uh, the an admissible neighborhood for alpha of 1 is simply a an arcwise connected simply connected neighborhood okay so uh, we know uh, alpha uh, p restricted to um, alpha comma u is a homeomorphism we know this already. So, suppose uh, uh, delta is a path from uh, uh, x to uh, a point of u okay then you know uh, uh, this open set delta comma u okay this open set delta comma u is going to be contained in p inverse u and and uh, p restricted to this delta comma u uh, is a homeomorphism. The only thing that it uses is that uh, u is uh, both simply connected and uh, arcwise connected alright. So, uh, it is clear that all sets of this form are going to be in the inverse image okay and I claim that the inverse image is exactly the union of sets of this form okay and I claim also that uh, uh, if the uh, first members are different then all these sets are disjoint okay uh, the union over paths delta from x to a point of u of basic open neighborhoods of the form delta comma u this is contained in p inverse u okay and uh, the claim is that this is an equality uh, uh, the claim is the above is an equality um, that is because uh, of the following reason you take an element of p inverse u okay then this element of p inverse u uh, suppose I call it as alpha okay then uh, uh, the end point of alpha is going to be a point of u alright and uh, by what I said this basic open neighborhood alpha comma u is going to be inside p inverse u okay. So, uh, uh, for if alpha so you know um, I should not have I should not have fixed an alpha here I am not fixing an alpha here I am just saying that uh, um, uh, uh, I mean this alpha could vary okay. So, what is really being fixed is this open set u okay this alpha could actually vary alright. The only condition is that uh, the end point of alpha lies inside u so long as the end point of alpha lies inside u okay then this p restricted to this basic open set is a local homeom is a, is a homeomorphism okay. So, uh, for if uh, so you if alpha is in p inverse u then you know um, alpha is certainly a point of this basic open set alpha comma u which is also in p inverse u. So, uh, uh, therefore, uh, this union is p inverse u okay then I will have to tell you that uh, these are all disjoint if uh, uh, if I if I take two of these things okay uh, if they intersect I should say they are the same okay. 
So, if the first members are different then I should say that they are disjoint okay. So, uh, um, claim uh, uh, the the union on the left side side is a disjoint union uh, if we consider It is a, it's a disjoint union um, let me not say anything else. Uh, so, if uh, for if let us say uh, some let us say some delta 1 comma u uh, intersects delta 2 comma u okay suppose they intersect all right. Then uh, I need to say that uh, delta 1 and delta 2 are uh, are one and the same okay and uh, uh, that should be obvious uh, if you remember the uh, um, the ideas following the uh, proof of Hausdorffness okay. So, what does it mean that these two intersect so that means there is a gamma okay uh, there is a gamma in this intersection all right. So, let us draw a diagram it means that uh, so I have something like this. So, we have uh, gamma we have point in the intersection of these two uh, open sets basic open sets and what does it mean it means that gamma uh, is uh, uh, because it is in here it is equal to delta 1 followed by a theta 1 uh, uh, delta 1 followed by a beta 1. Um, okay let it be as it is um, and then it is also equal to a delta 2 followed by a theta 2 because it is in here. So, let me uh, let me draw this um, and of course, uh, these two being equal tells you that the end point of theta 1 should be equal to the end point of theta 2 okay and of course, uh, the starting point of uh, theta 1 is the end point of delta 1 the starting point of theta 2 is the end point of delta 2. So, uh, situation is uh, uh, the diagram looks like this. So, this is uh, this is theta 1 and uh, well then there is one now there is one more here which is this is theta 2. So, this is theta 2 and uh, of course, theta 1 is a path uh, in u and theta 2 is also a path in u okay by the very definition of these basic open neighborhoods. And uh, uh, now, what I'll do is that uh, I'll I'll I just want to say that this is a disjoint union. So I'll have to say that if two members intersect, then they are completely equal. Okay. So I'll just show that this is contained in that, and that is contained in this. So what I'll do. Uh, so let me start with uh, take uh, take an element of uh, take an element of uh, the first member delta 1 comma u the first basic open set uh, uh, it will be of the form uh, delta 1 beta 1 okay. So, it is going to look like this it is going to be delta 1 followed by some path beta 1 uh, which is a again a path inside u okay and uh, I will I am going to show that this uh, homotopy class fixed end point homotopy class delta 1 beta 1 is also in uh, this basic open neighborhood okay. So, for that what I do is I make use of the fact that uh, u being arc wise connected uh, I can find a path from uh, delta 2 of 1 to the end point of beta 1 and let me call that as beta 2 okay. So, uh, a connect uh, uh, beta 1 of 1 to uh, uh, delta 2 of 1 by a path beta 2 uh, in u. Uh, so, uh, uh, so of course, I should say that the starting point is uh, uh, del uh, delta 2 of 1 okay starting at delta 2 of 1. 
so so connected by this path and then now notice that you see uh, uh, let us let us calculate uh, let, let us look at this uh, there is a closed loop here there is a closed loop here and that closed loop uh, uh, is going to be um, uh, homotopic to a constant path that is because the neighborhood u is uh, r twice connected and simply connected. So, if I call these points let me call this point as small y okay let me call this point as small y then uh, I have the following thing. So, I take I take beta 1 followed by beta 2 inverse then theta 2 and then theta 1 inverse okay. So, if I do that um, okay then I will get a um, uh, then I will have to start at this point uh, but let me start at this point. So, if I start at this point I should take beta 2 inverse then theta 2 theta 1 inverse beta and beta 1. So, let, look, let me look at that uh, the loop uh, so, let me write that down uh, uh, at y uh, y is just uh, beta 1 of uh, beta 1 of 1 uh, and it is also equal to beta 2 of 1 uh, uh, given by. So, this is my loop so beta 2 inverse and then go by delta by uh, theta 2 and then go by theta 1 inverse and then go by beta 1 is homotopic to the constant path at y since uh, u is simply connected okay. Now, uh, from this I am I am just going to um, try to calculate what beta 1 is homotopic 2. So, you know I I operate on the left by beta 2. So, I will get theta 2 uh, theta 1 inverse beta 1 is homotopic to beta 2. And then I operate by theta 2 inverse I will get theta 1 inverse beta 1 is homotopic to theta 2 inverse beta 2 and again I will operate by theta 1 on the left. So, I will get beta 1 is um, uh, going to give me theta 1 theta 2 inverse beta 2. So, beta 1 is homotopic to this. Now, uh, so now let me look at uh, delta 1 beta 1. So, delta 1 beta 1 will be homotopic to delta 1 followed by theta 1 theta 2 inverse beta 2 okay. But you see uh, delta 1 theta 1 is homotopic to delta 2 theta 2. So, you know I can uh, write this as homotopic to delta 2 theta 2 theta 2 inverse beta 2 and uh, that will be homotopic because theta 2 theta 2 inverse will be homotopic to, uh, to a constant path uh, I will get delta 2 beta 2 and uh, delta 2 beta 2 is now. Uh, so, what this tells you is that uh, which in terms of uh, fixed end point homotopy will mean you will, will mean that delta 1 beta 1 will be equal to delta 2 beta 2 but the latter namely delta 2 beta 2 is here. So, this is an element of uh, this basic open neighbor delta 2 comma u okay. So, uh, the model the story is you start with an uh, element in delta 1 comma u uh, you get you see that it is also in delta 2 comma u. So, this is a subset subset of that and uh, therefore, by symmetry that is also a subset of this okay. So, they are equal. So, this will imply that uh, uh, the, the two are equal. So, delta 1 comma u contained in uh, delta 2 comma u uh, and by symmetry uh, one will get uh, well delta 1 comma u will be equal to uh, delta 2 comma u ok. So, this completes the proof that uh, uh, this is a disjoint union and it is equal to p inverse u alright and therefore uh, what we have proved is that uh, uh, if you start with uh, an arcwise connected simply connected uh, uh, open set u then that open set itself serves as an admissible neighborhood for every point that it contains okay and therefore 
uh, uh, p becomes a uh, covering uh, covering map okay so that that gives you the uh, proof of the fact that p is a covering map all right okay so i'll stop here